Welcome to another VCE Physics coaching video. And today we're looking at Newton's law of universal gravitation. And this is on area of study one of the unit three and four course. And uh, congratulations if you're making a head start already um, in your VCE Physics. And some of you might be starting area of study uh, two first and then coming back to or should I say three, and then coming back to one to do motion first. But if you're starting area of study one, this is the uh, Newton's law of universal gravitation. And it states that um, there is a force of attraction between um, any two objects with mass. And it's proportional to the two masses and inversely proportional to their separation squared. So we'll look at an example in a moment. And there's a constant of proportionality which can be found experimentally. That's G, the gravitational constant. And it's, so the force is equal to G, the mass of object uh, one times the mass of object two in kilograms divided by their separation squared in meters. They may remember to square that. So as an example, we're going to look at the force between the earth and the moon. All right. So what we do there is substitute the numbers in for those. So the universal gravitational constant is 6.67 to three figures times 10 to the power of negative 11 uh, Newton meter squared per kilogram squared. And that's times the mass of the earth, which is 5.98 to three figures times 10 to the power of 24. Okay. You might be wondering how we can determine the mass of the earth. How do we know that? Maybe we can talk about that in a future video, if you, uh, if you remind me. And then the mass of the moon, we've got there, I've looked this one up on the internet, that's 7.35 by 10 to the 22, I've found. Uh, these two figures for the mass of the Earth and the gravitational constant, they would appear on the VCE formula sheet that's issued with the exam. And the Earth moon distance I've also looked up as about 380,000 kilometers, which comes out to, in scientific notation, 3.84. I was getting by 10 to the uh, eight meters. And you got to square that. Remember to square it, that's something students occasionally forget, uh, apparently, according to examiner's reports. Now, if you enter all of that into your calculator, notice we're keeping the equals all nice and lined up there. Um, we get, well, I'll carry four figures through, 1.988 by 10 to the 20. But um, I'll round that to three figures because all of the information here is to three figures. Comes out to 1.99 by 10 to the 20. And that'd be Newton's because it's a force. All right, so... Sometimes you're asked to answer to a certain number of significant figures. So there you go. So we've found um, that's a key dot point on the study design to be familiar with uh, Newton's law of universal gravitation. Any two massive bodies, like a person, like you and the Earth itself, for example. All right. So um, that's looking at the formula side of things. I received an interesting question a little while ago. Why, if the moon is attracted to the Earth, well, why doesn't it crash into the Earth then? All right, so we're going to take a quick look at that one now as well. And to do that, I might go to a new board and let's draw a picture of the Earth. And we'll draw the moon, not to scale their distance, of course. And let's examine the motion. I might just use a little laser pointer here. Now, if the moon had no force at all, it'd just travel in a straight line, if it was already traveling in a straight line in accordance with Newton's uh, first law. But of course, the gravitational attraction of the Earth is affecting the Earth the motion of the moon because the force is perpendicular towards the center of the earth. And so if the moon's already got velocity, the motion of the moon is changing, just not enough to crash into the earth. It's falling around the earth. So what would have to change? Well, if we slowed the moon down right here, for example, that means it would start to be attracted more closely Maybe with the same well, with the same force, but its motion would be affected more. Uh, and if it if it slows down a little bit, it moves. It might move something like this. 
in orbit. So an elliptical orbit. So it almost crashes into the Earth, but just falls around it at high speed and then is swung out to apogee, as they call it, and then speeds up around a perigee as it gets close to there. If we slowed it down even more, eventually, yes, it would crash into the Earth. It would swing right around and maybe splash down, hopefully. We say splash down, hopefully, because that's the job of an orbital engineer to understand these calculations and make a satellite, for example, that's being decommissioned, fall into the middle of the Pacific Ocean or the Indian Ocean or something and not overland. So these sort of calculations do have a meaning. So um, what, uh, when does an object crash into the Earth or not under gravitational attraction? Well, it depends on its initial conditions and the strength of the force and those sorts of things. So certainly a topic for more investigation, but a good question. And I hope that's helped not only uh, you to apply the formula for the universal gravitation, but also just to understand what's going on and open up our thinking a little bit to how uh, it actually affects the motion of objects or could affect it depending on the circumstances. Congratulations if you're already making a start on your VCE physics. And I hope this exercise helps you understand um, that particular concept a bit more and complete your exercise and move on to the next one and maybe uh, have time to enjoy your holidays as well. In the meantime, thank you very much for enjoying another VCE physics coaching